Hi, welcome back to Two Cells One Pack. Today we're going to do the V13 motor bolt change. Uh, it's the same process as the tire change. Let's go. Let's do it. These are the tools you'll need to complete the V13 tire change. A Phillips PH2 screwdriver, a 3, 4, and 5 millimeter hex, a pair of snips for the zip ties, as well as two in motion tools that were provided with the V13, and lastly, a 5 millimeter hex with a breaker bar. Now, remember, if you're doing the tire change, you'll also need the tire spoons as well as a tire valve core remover. Luckily, with the V13 in motion, did do a good job uh, in designing it to allow you to drop the motor fairly easily. So the only thing we have to do is remove this top plate, get access to the phase wires, and remove the suspension linkages, and we can slide this whole thing right out. So it's a three millimeter hex. There's four of them that hold up the handle. There are now four screws on the top cover that allow you to remove it. Uh, two of the screws are exposed, but the other two screws are hidden by a sticker on this side and the other side. So make sure you peel these stickers carefully. And usually I like to move them over by half an inch so that you can always see that screw. Pulling on these rubbers will allow you to expose the suspension parts as well as the screws required to remove in order to remove the remaining top cover. Now once you've exposed this, uh, you can remove this top cover and unplug all the connectors. However, since you have access to the suspension that you need to remove as well as the phase wires, I don't see the need to remove this cover. Now the three phase wires are held down by four millimeter hex, and then there is the retaining clip that's held on by Phillips. Once the retaining clip is removed, you can now remove the phase wires and hall sensors. Now we need to release these two suspension pieces in order to drop the wheel out of the shell. You'll want to look into your box to see if you can find this orange piece as the orange piece slots perfectly in for you to unscrew this. Now that you've released everything off the top, the phase wire is the suspension. You should now be able to pull this motor directly out of the wheel. Now this motor may weigh about 25 pounds. I haven't weighed it, uh, but just be careful. Since you have the motor sitting on the table, in order to change the tire, we will need to remove the damper as well as the shock absorber. And you'll want to look into your box for this tool. This tool, the end of it is perfectly matched to the size of the suspension bottom, as well as this Allen key will help you get leverage to rotate it. With the shock absorbers and dampers removed, you'll want to release the phase wires in order to remove the shell. Uh, InMotion has put zip ties, which I'm not a big fan of, as they are disposable in nature. And then there's these five Phillips screws to remove the retaining plate.
Once you removed all the hardware off the motor, at this point you can do your tire change. Now, for me, I don't need to do the tire change because we're just doing the motor bolt swap, so I'm going to be reassembling to the point where I put the new motor bolts in. Now, at any time you remove your motor bolts from your wheel, and Motion has advised us that the motor bolts are only supposed to be torqued down to 18.18 Newton meters. So make sure that you have a good torque wrench handy uh, so that you don't over torque the bolts and cause any sort of shearing problem. When you're putting the rubber gasket back in to hold the phase wires from getting damaged in the suspension as it's being moved, uh, you want to make sure that the thicker side from this channel is facing down into the phase wires. Before putting our mudguard back on, uh, make sure you replace these uh, zap straps, zip ties, the ones that you cut, uh, as putting them on now will be much easier than putting them on later. Now in order to figure out the orientation of your mudguard, just remember that the phase wire with the blue heat shrink is on the left side of the wheel. So in our case, the back of the wheel will be this way. When replacing the shock absorber and damper back into the suspension, you'll notice that there's one bigger hole and one smaller hole. The bigger hole is for the air shock with the red bottom cap, and the smaller hole is for the black cap. When you're putting these in, it may be easy to cross thread, so I like to make it all the way in by hand before tightening it down with the wrench. Once you have a couple threads in, if it gets tight, you can use the wrench, but just make sure that it's not cross-threading. Before you marry the motor back into the wheel assembly, make sure you put these washers back onto the damper assemblies. We are now ready to marry the motor back to the battery controller. Let's slide it in. Now, remember these pieces, we're gonna re-secure them onto the suspension. Make sure you bring your orange tool again as it slots perfectly in so you don't just screw with wrenches.
for the phase wires, Inmotion has written here in blue, green, and yellow, which therefore makes it very easy not to screw things up. Uh, another thing they'd like to do is they have these epoxy or glue that they put on. It's almost like a hot glue. However, it kind of helps because it shows you the direction in which the cable came from. So for the blue one, you can see that it'll be from the top. From the yellow, the green, it'll come from the bottom, and the yellow will come straight through through here. That leaves this last one for the hall sensors. For the hall sensors, uh, they are redundant and they're both do the same thing. So whether you plug the white one at the top or the white one at the bottom, it won't make a difference. Now, when you put the retaining clip back on, just remember that these two square notches will face the phase wires and it matches up with the square notches on the plastic body. Now to secure the top cover back to the wheel, we want to find these long wooden screws with a three mil hex. And And now on each edge of the top shell, we have these small screws. When putting back the handle, it may be hard to figure out which rotation it is. If you look at the side profile, you'll see a slight tapering outwards. This tapering matches the outside edge of the wheel. So that marks the end of the tire change instructional of the V13. Now, if you encounter problems, feel free to reach out. If you have a certain maker model that you own and you want me to prioritize the tire change instructional for, please do let us know. Uh, otherwise, that's the end of the video. If you think this video is useful, please like and subscribe. And you can also turn on the ding dong ding dong to receive the notification of our latest content.